Hey guys, this is Jay from Wisdom Watch Report. Uh, today I'll be reviewing the Helsin Shark Diver. Um, this particular model is the 40 millimeter variant. Um, it also comes in a 42 millimeter and a 45 millimeter. Um, this model, is, since it's the 40 millimeter, features the Miyota 9015 movement, which is a relatively new movement from uh, Miyota, it's owned by Citizen Watch Company, uh, aimed at being one of the head-to-head uh, -head competitors with the ETA 2824-2, which uh, some of you may know is becoming harder and harder to get for the micro brew brands uh, due to Swatch Group's decision to uh, lower production. But uh, so far it seems like a pretty capable movement. Um, it has a 28,800 beats per hour rate, which uh, translates to 8 beats per second, which uh, for us just means it has a much smoother seconds hand than what you typically get with most Miyota movements, which people seem to get is a Miyota 8215 uh, in most watches. But this one is a bit higher end, um, and in my experience so far having the watch, much more accurate. Uh, this watch gains about four to five seconds a day uh, while wearing it, and uh, if I take it off at night, leave it face up, it seems to uh, even out to about plus one seconds for the next day. Uh, so overall, it's been very accurate so far. Um, I haven't checked its diving capabilities as of yet um, in real-world diving. It is uh, rated up to 500 meters, as you can see. Um, but I have put it in a pressure chamber and had it tested, and it, it did pass. Um, although, as I said, I, I did not take it diving. Um, this particular watch comes, on, uh, it comes with a bracelet, which is a pretty substantial link bracelet, as you can see. Um, has all screwed-in parts. Each link um, is articulated, which in other words means that it can be uh, positioned. Either way, it doesn't have like a, a lock as some Seikos have where you can't bend them all the way or you know, other brands do that. These are they're fully articulated links um, and they're screwed in on both sides, which means that you can actually, you'd have to use a screwdriver that is supplied by Helsin on either end. You'd actually take that, and I'll show you what that is in a minute, take the driver, put it in on both sides, and then screw them out. Um, which also means you can take these links completely apart. Uh, some people may like this. Uh, some people are a little weary of uh, screws getting stripped or coming loose during use. Uh, they may have a problem with that. But honestly, it, it doesn't seem like a big deal to me. Actually, I much prefer screws to having um, pins, or especially split pins in a watch, especially of, um, in this price range. It, it should have screws. And you can uh, put thread lock in, which I have done in this particular one. I, I tend to put thread lock in every link up until the last one, just in case I need in the future to add links. It's a little bit easier to get the screws out if you don't put them in every single hole, just as long as you know that you put it in the last one, or that you'd rather you didn't put it in the last one, you should be fine. But uh, as of yet, I've had no problems with this. Um, also has a scissor clasp and solid end links, as you can see here. And the bracelet connects to the case with a hex screw different from the screws to size the bracelet. Um, the, bra the screw driver is supplied by Halson to take this out. Um, it's actually not supplied to take apart the bracelet. You need to either take it to a watchmaker or a jeweler or um, just to the mall somewhere, one of those stores. You can buy your own screwdrivers and uh, take those out yourself. But the oddly enough, to take the bracelet off, it is supplied. Most likely due to the fact that Halson also supplies you with a rubber isoframe style strap. Um, and it makes it taking the bracelet off and swapping that in much easier. Um, and I'll show you that, that in a minute. Um, it is annual reflective coating on the, uh, on the sapphire on the inside only, not on the outside. Uh, I actually prefer that because, as some of you know, the annual reflective coating can wear off, it can scrape off, that uh, it becomes somewhat noticeable in certain angles. You'll, you'll see the, the sheen across the glass. But uh, in certain parts where it's scratched off, it'll be almost like an, like an oil slick. You'll see a spot missing. Th this one won't have that problem. Um, the bezel and the markers and hands on this are all loomed with C3 Super Luminova. It is ridiculously bright. I can't show you the loom right now on this, but um, possibly in the description I could post some pictures, or you can just do a quick Google search. This watch is known for how bright its loom is. And it is um, it's applied quite a bit. It, you, it's very difficult to see in a video, but it, it almost has a, a 3D texture, the amount of loom they've put on the dial, where you, you can see they put quite a bit on there. 
Um, the loom on the dial and the hands itself are um, it's pretty it's pretty crisp lines. Doesn't have any any slop to it. But uh, on the bezel, I, I can't say the same. One thing I don't like on the bezel pip, and I actually noticed this in quite a few pictures on the internet. I, I wasn't sure if it was just something that um, was coming up in photographs, but wasn't really true to real life. But uh, the bezel pip itself, it's almost as if they inject loom into it and just kind of skim off the top. So it has very, not really rough lines, but it almost that it overfilled a little bit and it, it's not perfectly straight as it should be, where it, as the uh, markers and the indices inside are, are pretty crisp. This one is not. Um, the, the actual numbers and the lines on the markers um, for the bezel itself seem okay. It's just that pip kind of bothers me because it's not, it's really like a sloppy, almost hand-drawn loom triangle. Uh, the bezel itself is 120 clicks, unidirectional. Uh, very stiff bezel, at least on my model. It, it may be different um, on, you know, as watch to watch goes, you might have one that's a little bit looser than others just, you know, for uh, QC reasons. But this one's a very, very stiff bezel. Actually, when it's, it's easy to turn in your hands, but on your wrist, you may, you may find a problem just uh, wearing it that you're, you're almost turning the watch on your wrist to get this to turn. Very, very difficult. But uh, for a real-world diver, that, that is a good thing because you don't really want your bezel turning on you while you're underwater. Even though it'll only make your dive time shorter, it's, it's just something you don't really want to have to worry about. But with uh, dive computers, most guys really don't use these for diving anyway. But uh, it is something that I think Helsing could have worked on a little bit more was just making the bezel a little bit smoother. But uh, overall, it, it's not too bad. It's just a little bit tighter than I would have wanted it. I'm, I'm used to like the buttery smooths like a Seiko Monster or a 007, something like that. But, you know, overall, it's, it's not bad by any, by any means. Um, this one also has a signed crown and uh, very substantial crown guards. Um, looks like they just milled this whole case out of a block of steel and uh, just beveled out two thick crown guards right out of here. So that, that I really like. This is, this is a tool diver at heart. And uh, the crown guards are no exception to this. Um, screw down crown, obviously. And this one, uh, something I, I don't see a lot, except on the higher end brands, has a gasket on the crown st stem right there, on the screwed threading. It has a gasket, which um, most divers that are rated this deep should have. Uh, a lot of brands don't seem to do that. But uh, this one does. And uh, I find that it just a... Uh, Nice feature to have, makes me uh, feel a little bit better about the water resistancy. But like I said, this one did pass a uh, gas gasket chamber test that I put it through. But uh, so that's just uh, attention to detail. They did a good job on that. Very sure um, threading doesn't feel grindy at all. That I'm gonna strip the crown it's threading at all. It's just very sure. Goes right in, screws down tight, and it's locked in place. Um, this one also the case back on this is etched. Like I said, it has the Miyota 9015 movement, which it designates on the back. Uh, difficult to see there. But, you know, as you can see, it's got a little diver and uh, a couple sharks going around just for, you know, purposes of the name, Shark Diver. And it just tells you the, um, you know, sapphire crystal, water rating, and you can see the rest. And just this watch's particular number. Um, we'll get onto the packaging. Um, Helsons come inside of this really heavy plastic cylinder case, which screws down like a jar. Comes inside of this foam block here, which is kind of separated. Once you take it out, you'll see. Once you pull it apart, your watch will be right in the middle, and then the tools and the strap will be stuffed in. But I find it easier now that I put these tools in here. Um, extra links are in there. Purposes of this video, I'll show you the strap and the tool it came with. Also comes with two extra lug bars to holding the bracelet on. Guess if you ever uh, lose one or accidentally break a piece, um, you have these these here. Um, Helsin's very good with customer service too. You can probably ask them for a couple more, and they would end up giving them to you. They seem pretty good like that. But uh, they do come supplied with this, so that's an added bonus. I want to put on a NATO strap or something. 
This here is the isoframe style strap that ships with the Helsin. Um, I wasn't expecting much. I thought that it would be kind of like, you know, a cheap throw-in that they put just for, uh, for sales purposes, just to make you really put you over the edge and, and get one. But it actually, it, it's quite nice. Um, it's very pliable. It's not too stiff, but it, it's not like a, one of those cheap, flimsy rubber straps that, you know, it's not going to last too long. You'll just get rid of it. Um, they, they did a good job on this. Um, it looks like the name of the company they actually supplied to make it is listed on the back here is a CUDA, I guess I'm for like Barracuda, something to that effect. But um, just goes to show they're not like using the cheapest of the cheap straps, throwing it in there. It, it is a pretty nice strap. Obviously, it's not going to be quite as good as a genuine isoframe, but uh, the style is there, and they didn't have to give it to you, and it, it does seem pretty nice. I've, I put it on mine uh, for about a day, wears well. Um, I just prefer the bracelet myself, and uh, the Helsin's bracelet is really nice. So. Put that back. This is the screw bar, or the screwdriver, rather, that comes with the Helsin. comes shipped in this little plastic sleeve here. Um, this is for the hex end that takes out the bracelet. Let me get that in focus there. It's kind of difficult to focus on that small one, but this is for actually taking the bracelet lugs off of the end piece. As you can see right in there, you would put this in and you're able to screw off that bracelet right there and put on either a rubber strap or a NATO or leather band, whatever you like. Um, since you actually have to take the bracelet off by putting a screwdriver in each end and turning both to actually get that off, you can't just put it in one end and get it off. They, uh, at first it may seem like there's only one screwdriver, and actually, mine came with two. I guess some people maybe, uh, didn't figure this out and there was a problem in the past, but it, it unscrews here, and you have two screwdrivers, and that, that's what you need to get that out. And it's a, it's a pretty good fit. Um, I haven't had a problem stripping any screws, I don't feel like I'm going to. Um, the hex idea was, in my opinion, it's pretty good. It's better than a flat head. If you like flat heads, you're a little bit easier to slide out of the screw or um, tap and possibly scratch up the watch. This one it does a good job, and uh, I definitely like the idea of them giving you a screwdriver with this one. It w works well. Um, also coming inside the bottom of the tin is Helsin's warranty. And it comes with a one-year warranty, um, typical of you know most watch companies, nothing different there. International, and uh, it is transferable, so if you ever wanted to get one used, you can pick one up at a good price, go right ahead. If it's under warranty, it'll still transfer to you. Um, basically, this one, you know, just thrown inside the box here, and uh, keep it there in case I ever need it, but it seems good so far. So... Overall, um, I'm pretty happy with this watch. It, it's definitely, uh, it's pretty much exactly what I thought it would be. Um, it's a nice tool diver, very good weight to it. Um, keeps time better than I thought, m much better. And Miyota is typically, in, in my experience, within about 10 to 15 seconds a day, you know, for the, for the average upper ends of losing or gaining time. But, uh, you know, it's still not too bad. But this particular one, I, I'm assuming because this is my first Miyota 9015 movement. Um, it was much better than the uh, the 82 series. Um, much better timekeeping. That it's more pleasing to the eye, smoother seconds hand, and uh, overall, um, it's still relatively new movement. But I'm going to guess that it's just as reliable. I I, don't, I haven't had a problem with any Miotas yet, and I don't think they would have released something like this if uh, they didn't think it was up to par with anything uh, Etta was putting out. So, um, if you're on the fence about one of these, I would definitely uh, consider it. Um, it's a good watch, very accurate, um, dive capable. A lot of guys swear by these. I know quite a few people on the Watch You Seek forums in uh, F71 and uh, F74 that go diving with these quite often. Um, it's a great watch and uh, also comes in white with blue markers, blue with uh, the C3, which kind of is like a minty green color, but a blue dial. And uh, the 42 and 45 millimeters have a, quite a few more variants in colors and uh, bronze cases and whatnot. But uh, for me, 40 millimeter. Um, if you want, I'll show you just, you know, you know what 40 millimeters looks like. I'll show you what it compares to comparison with like something like a Vostok Amphibia, which is another pretty popular model. 
on the forums. Now uh, the Vostok here is a 42 millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. It could, actually could be a, I believe now it is a 40 millimeter. But um, it's very close in size. I have a pretty small wrist, and uh, the Helsin fits just fine. That's why I figured I would get the 40 millimeter. Fits pretty well. It's got a very slim profile for a tool diver. I was I was surprised by that. You can see it, it, it's not as thick, nearly as thick as I thought it would be. Um, in my opinion, it's actually a good thing. Um, some of the divers on the market now, they're just getting too big. You know, these really thick, chunky divers, which is fine if you like that, but for small wristed guys like myself, this really is exactly what I need. Um, and another thing worth mentioning is the 40 millimeter we have here does not come with a helium escape valve like the 42 and the 45 millimeter versions. And in all honesty, that is really just a sales gimmick in my opinion. You do not need a helium escape valve unless you are a pro diver going into a diving bell, a decompression chamber, coming back up from a long dive where you could have allowed helium to get into the watch. It does not improve its depth capability. It does not improve anything like that. It's, it's really something you will never use unless you are a diver. That I'm really quite happy they did not put that in this model. I guess they listen to a lot of people who think the same thing. And uh, it was a good move in my opinion. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a review on the new Oberst Morgan Explorer, which uh, should be coming out hopefully in September on the 20th. Um, I have a pre-order place for that. Um, very similar specs to this watch. And uh, hopefully we'll be getting that, and I'll do a review for you guys soon. Thanks.